All right, so we're at the base of this nectarine tree here, and we have uh, a ring of biochar just right around the trunk, and then sort of an outer layer of wood chips around the trunk of the tree. Before I get to why I've, I've done this, let's talk a little bit about the biochar first and foremost. Um, as we explore whether you should be using biochar and wood chips, or one or the other, or the pluses and minuses of both. So, biochar, you're probably familiar with if you are a permaculturist, an ecologist, somebody who um, is into forest gardening, anybody like that, anybody who's into organic gardening actually in general has probably heard of this substance. This is just pyrolyzed wood. It can also be um, other substances like um, pyrolyzed cardboard or any anything carbonaceous can be transformed into biochar. So when the wood is pyrolyzed, it becomes a stable form of carbon and this is what we call the biochar. This substance is very light because it has a very large number of pores, it has a huge amount of surface area within it. And that is what um, makes it so beneficial for the soil, primarily because it creates a great soil structure. All right, this surface area is where nutrients can actually um, bind to all these pores um, within the biochar. You're probably familiar um, that charcoal is often used in uh, water filtration, and this is for the same reason. Uh, this biochar has an electrical charge that captures uh, ions, all right? That's why it's used as a filter. Um, it binds the ions and takes them out of the water, so your result is a clean, pure water. So the thing, same thing happens in the soil. Um, this biochar has a high cation exchange capacity. That is, it binds nutrients in the soil, uh, sequesters them, and prevents them from leaching. So this is why biochar is used um, primarily. So a lot of people will say that you need to charge the biochar, and the reason they say that is because this, this uh, substance by in and of itself is very hungry hungry substance. It has a high binding capacity, like I mentioned. Um, so it's going to, if you stick this directly in the soil, it's going to absorb nutrients from the soil. Um, in other words, it will chelate these nutrients. Now we don't want to do this because that lessens the amount of uh, nutrients freely available to the plants. So it's important, if you're going to actually bury this in the soil, you want to first basically fill your bank, your biochar bank, with nutrients. And that's what people refer to as the charging process. So you're basically wanting to fill all these little pores with nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, all the nutrients that plants need, um, so that they can begin to absorb it from the char, and the char doesn't be sort of become a, a nutrient um, a, a nutrient, uh, how shall we say, black hole where, you know, it's taking more than it's giving. Now, I have not charged any of this biochar, and the reason being is that I'm not burying it. I'm just putting it on the surface of the soil, and I'm letting the soil microbiome, microbiome slowly um, integrate this material into the soil. I'm not force-feeding the soil. If you force feed the soil carbon, okay, you've got an excess of carbon because you've buried this substance, you've created a condition where the microbes will proliferate to take advantage of it. Okay, they, they're going to need to, they want to eat that carbon. It's freely available. There's tons of it available. Problem is, um, all organisms need a balanced diet, and these microbes will also need a certain amount of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium uh, to function. So what happens is, in order to take advantage of this excess carbon, 
um, the microbiome proliferates, but you didn't increase nitrogen at the same time. And so what happens is the soil becomes depleted in nitrogen, which is what plants need for um, the growth of their vegetative parts, um, as well as other nutrients like phosphorus and potassium. So you've essentially starved the soil of nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus by force-feeding it carbon. And the reverse is also true. If you force-feed the so soil nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, like most farmers do with chemical fertilizers, you then force the soil biome to eat what little carbon there is left. Okay, you're basically burning off the carbon biologically. Because there's so much nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, the organisms proliferate, but at the same time, you did not increase the carbon. You did not increase the carbon of the soil. And so you're left with carbon depleted soils that lose their soil structure, lose their ability to retain water, and um, start down this cycle of endless fertilization just to keep the process going. So that's the basics of biochar. And again, that's the reason I do not actually incorporate in this into the soil. I let the soil microbiome eat it, um, incorporate it um, on its own terms just by leaving it on the surface of the soil. I thereby do not have to charge this substance. Okay, and this is really great because I've increased the water holding capacity of the soil. I've increased its ability to hold nutrients. It's now an excellent home for all kinds of soil life, including worms, um, fung fungi, mycorrhizal fungi. Okay, so this becomes a great, uh, a great soil for plants of all kinds, especially uh, woody perennials, which really love the carbon fungal dominated soils. Uh, that biochar generates. So with that said, sounds like I'm pretty positive on biochar. Um, am I saying that you should use biochar over wood chips? Or why would somebody use wood chips instead of biochar? Well, biochar is great because you can make it without heavy machinery, okay? You do not need a wood chipper to create your own biochar. So that's one advantage. But what about wood chips? Why, why would somebody use wood chips instead of biochar and what's the difference? So, honestly, this biochar is sort of a fast, a fast breakdown of these wood chips. We're starting with the same substance, all right? These are, these are chopped up mechanically and these are broken down by pyrolysis. So, in essence, we're starting with the same substance here, but we have two different end forms. Now, this, these wood chips are going to break down very slowly in the soil, much slower than this uh, biochar, which is sort of a fast track to soil. Now, that can be good because these wood chips have a greater ability to suppress weeds than the biochar. So that's a benefit. When you put these down on the ground, um, the wood chips do a much better job of preventing the growth of weeds than the biochar does. The biochar is very light, um, and it's not too hard, even if you have a air layer a couple inches thick, it's not too hard for the weeds to poke through. So that's one advantage. That's probably the main advantage. The other advantage is it's often freely available um, from your local municipality. People are constantly trying to get rid of woody debris when they live in the city or the suburbs. And so um, your local municipality may actually chip up this debris and these chips are often freely available um, for pickup. So that's definitely a huge advantage of using the wood chips in my mind. Now, eventually, these wood chips will break down into soil, um, similar to the biochar, just by slow microbial and fungal decay. 
And so the question is, are you left with more nutrition in the soil um, by letting the wood chips break down naturally or um, by pyrolyzing various carbonaceous substances into biochar? And my hunch is that um, you will be left with more nutrients by letting these wood chips break down on their own. Now you're going to lose some carbon to the atmosphere um, as these break down um, in the same way that when you pyrolyze woody debris, um, a lot of that carbon goes up to the, into the atmosphere as smoke um, as part of the process of pyrolyzation. Similarly, as these are broken down, any part of this that's exposed to the air is losing carbon to the atmosphere slowly as part of the microbiological micro decay. So either way, you're losing carbon, but I suspect that you are losing more via pyrolysis than you do via the slow breakdown of these wood chips. And you're really only losing carbon from the layer that is exposed to the air. So this kind of goes back to why I have the biochar right around the base of the tree and the wood chips further out. Around the base of the tree, I want I sort of want a quick soil. I want to quickly, I want to quickly turn um, the soil into a water holding, nutrient holding um, machine. I want to quickly improve the soil right around the base of the tree, and then further out, I want more of a weed suppression. I want a slower decomposition um, that is provided by the wood chips. So to answer the question, biochar or wood chips, I think both are great. A lot depends on where you live and what your needs are. Again, biochar is something you can make yourself. Not that you can't make the wood chips, but it does require a lot of material and you need a wood chipper. On the other hand, you can usually get wood chips for free and biochar you're going to have to make yourself. So I use both. I usually put a ring of biochar around a plant that I want to establish, usually a shrub or tree. And then I'm working my way out from that initial ring of biochar um, with the wood chips for that extra weed suppression and that slow um, nutrient release um, that is expounded upon by the Back to Eden method. So. I hope that helps you guys. I think um, I think everybody should do, be using both of these substances. Um, again, we got the same starting material, just a different way to go from wood to soil, and they both have their benefits, um, their pluses and their minuses. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, or if there's anything you think I've left out. Anything you want to add to the discussion, please leave in the comments below. I appreciate your time. Thanks, and see you next time.